A manhunt has been launched following the murder of three women near London. The suspect is believed to be carrying a crossbow. U.S. President Joe Biden has pledged to forcefully defend Ukraine against Russia's invasion at the NATO summit. Biden made the vow in Washington on Tuesday as leaders of NATO countries in Europe and North America convene at a summit this week to mark the military alliance's 75th anniversary. In Europe, Putin's war of aggression against Ukraine continues. And Putin wants nothing less, nothing less than Ukraine's total subjugation to end Ukraine's democracy, to destroy Ukraine's, Ukraine's, Ukraine's culture, and to wipe Ukraine off the map. And we know Putin won't stop at Ukraine. But make no mistake, Ukraine can and will stop Putin. Outgoing NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, in his remarks, said NATO faces serious security challenges and needs to step up cooperation. Stoltenberg, who has spent nearly a decade as NATO chief, urged the West not to relent in arming Ukraine. Not only would it embolden President Putin, it would also embolden other authoritarian leaders in Iran, in North Korea and China. They all support Russia's brutal war. They all want NATO to fail. So the outcome of this war will shape global security for decades to come. The time to stand for freedom and democracy is now. The place is Ukraine. The three-day summit comes amid concerns in the U.S. and fears of a potential Donald Trump presidency. Six people were killed and 16 injured in Ukraine after overnight Russian attacks, according to regional authorities. Moscow launched 20 attack drones overnight, but the Ukrainian air defense reportedly shot down 14, say its air force. Russia also targeted the Ukrainian energy infrastructure. After drones attacked a power plant in Rivne, some areas were left without electricity, according to Ukraine's state-owned energy operator. In the Donetsk region, at least three were injured following Russian shelling of a residential quarter. The head of the area's military administration said a six-year-old child was amongst the wounded. British police are on a manhunt after three women were killed in a house near London. The man is believed to be armed with a crossbow. Hertfordshire police said Carl Clifford, 26, was being sought over the suspected triple murder and is presumed to be in Hertfordshire or North London. Police said the three women who were related were found seriously injured in a house in Bushy, northwest of London, on Tuesday evening. Sadly, they all died at the scene. An Israeli airstrike on a school turned shelter in southern Gaza has killed at least 29 Palestinians, according to the territory's Hamas run health ministry. <laughs> The gate of al Auda school was struck in the town of Abbasan al-Kabira, east of Khan Yunis, from where civilians were ordered to evacuate last week. The local hospital spokesperson said the dead included at least seven women and children, but the death toll is likely to rise. The Israeli military claims it was targeting a terrorist from Hamas's military wing, who, it said, was involved in the 7th of October attack. Israeli raids in Gaza have also forced the closure of many hospitals and medical facilities since the start of the war, causing the deaths of patients and medical workers, along with massive destruction to facilities and equipment. 
In Gaza City, the Al Ali and the Patients Friends Association hospitals have shut down, along with all three medical facilities run by the Red Crescent. Israel has claimed Hamas uses hospitals for military purposes, though it has provided only limited evidence. An arrest warrant has been issued in absentia for the widow of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny by a Russian court. Yulia Navalny, who lives abroad, would face arrest if she returned to Russia, where the Kremlin is clamping down on opposition. A Moscow district court ruled to arrest her on charges of alleged involvement in an extremist group. It comes after Navalny accused Putin of orchestrating her husband's death and vowed to continue his campaign against the Russian regime. Far left La France Insoumise party lawmakers have rallied outside France's National Assembly, calling for a new prime minister. The party president stood outside the Palais Bourbon, demanding that one of the members of the successful new Popular Front coalition be appointed. Nous avons gagné les élections législatives. Nous sommes avec le nouveau Front Populaire aujourd'hui. La première force politique à l'Assemblée nationale, c'est l'issue du scrutin de ce dimanche. Et nous exigeons qu'Emmanuel Macron respecte le vote populaire. Centrist politicians want to also be involved in government. Personne n'a de majorité à l'Assemblée, aucun bloc, quoi que certains disent. Et les Français nous ont envoyé, à mon sens, un message très clair. Ils n'ont pas voulu donner de majorité absolue à un quelconque groupe politique. Donc ils nous enjoignent de nous entendre, de travailler ensemble, et c'est ce que nous devons faire. Sunday's French legislative elections left no political faction close to a majority needed to form government. As you can see behind me, the Spanish are going absolutely wild after their team just propelled them to a spot in the Euro 2024 final on Sunday. They just beat France 2-1. Be really good, we are the best country. To the final. Mais quand même, ça a été un beau jeu, on a tout donné et on était tous ensemble ici pour soutenir notre pays. Donc c'était cool. And experts say that whoever wins this match, which tonight was between the football royalty of France and Spain, are the favorites to win the final. Liv Stroud in Berlin for Euro News. Spain have beaten France 2-1 to reach the Euro 2024 final in Berlin and stay on course for a record fourth title. It was a tough start for La Roja as they went down after only nine minutes. Spain's Lamin Yamal leveled it in the 21st minute with a stunning shot that made him the youngest scorer in the tournament's history at the age of 16. Four minutes later, his teammate Dani Olmo put Spain in front after snagging a ball in the penalty area to slam it towards the low corner. The game was interrupted in the second half as a man stormed the pitch in the attempt of taking a selfie with Mbappé. But France failed to get dangerous as Spain cruised towards the final whistle accompanied by the public's ole. They will play England or the Netherlands in the final on Sunday. Thank God. Europe's big new rocket, Ariane 6, has made its inaugural flight. The European Expandable Launch System, developed on behalf of the European Space Agency, took off on Tuesday from Europe's space port in Kourou, French Guyana. Originally scheduled for 2020, but pushed back due to the COVID pandemic and Russia's war with Ukraine, up to 13 European countries led by France collaborated on the development of Ariane 6. According to experts, the rocket will ensure Europe's guaranteed autonomous access to space. That will include the ability to go further, faster and more sustainably disposing of the launcher's upper stage that will prevent it from becoming space debris.
European officials aim to have Ariane 6 flying roughly once a month. Its predecessor, Ariane 5, famously blew itself up on its debut after just 37 seconds in 1996. It's no secret that France has long been a nation of cheese lovers, with the average French person buying a whopping 12.5 kilos of cheese every year. And there is no shortage of choice. France makes around 1,200 different types of cheeses, from the boulette d'Avene, made with cow's milk in northern France, to a whole variety of goat cheeses from the Loire Valley, the Alps and other regions. The dairy industry as a whole accounts for almost 300,000 jobs, leaving no doubt that cheese is big business. But, though it is a French staple, the traditional ways of consuming cheese are changing. Fromagerie Quatre Hommes, an iconic Parisian shop dating back to the 1950s, has seen this evolution firsthand. I think traditionally you have a cheese plate after the main course and before dessert. This is the traditional way of having a cheese plate in, in France. But I think this traditional way is evolving. Uh, now you can have uh, all cheese and meat uh, course. Uh, you can have cheese in appetizer and not after the main course. Uh, you can have cheese at breakfast. Uh, you really, we really change the way of eating cheese. And though they may not stay loyal to their eating habits, Catch Cut On says the Parisians know what they want, and that's French cheese. 